So hello, yes, it's me, it's Jason. It's Saturday afternoon, depending on where you are in the world. And I wanted to do a live stream to talk about the new Magic.me course, Mastering Meditation. But, I, of course, I'm not gonna just talk at you uh, or tell you just about the course. I wanted to do something uh, special for this broadcast on a Saturday, since you're taking time to spend with me and talk about the book, Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. Why is this important? This is probably the most important book on meditation ever written. And beyond that, it's probably the best book on spirituality, or certainly one of them ever written. Practical spirituality in terms of actual technique. If you want a grimoire to follow, if you want something that will give you a step-by-step -step guidebook, workbook to mastering your mind, this is it. This has been it for, for centuries. It will be it for centuries to come. It is, it, it's a classic. And it's a, often used by yoga teachers in yoga teacher training. And you'll often find people talking about it in Hatha yoga classes. But that's only scraping the surface. The reason that we're interested in talking about this book is that it's a book about magic. Magic specifically meaning harnessing your mind to be able to do what you want to do in life. It is, in my perspective, the user's manual for the human mind, and we would all do well to study it. So why am I talking about this book? Obviously, we have a new course out at magic.me. If you haven't seen it yet, go to the link that is below this live stream. I'm a little slow today. I've been burning really hard all week to get this course out and promoted and uh, it's also a very exciting time at magic.me as we are expanding so i'm a little bit slow today bear with me but let's really dig into this so the new course is mastering meditation it is a mega course it is like adept initiative alchemy of chaos all the other mega courses and it is probably, in fact, it is the best Magic.me course yet. It's not quite as flashy as some of the others. I will readily say that, you know, we're not talking about magic and money and manifesting and, you know, chaos magic and all that cool stuff, but it is the most important one. And it is the most serious one. It is a, an eight week course for serious students, serious meditators, people who really, really, really want to master the core technique of meditation, which in my opinion is the most important thing you could possibly be doing with your time outside of probably looking after your physical health. I don't think that that's an exaggeration. Next to physical exercise and diet, meditation is the most important thing you can do for yourself. It will improve everything you do in life because it improves your mind. It is exercise for the mind to the point where it actually increases the gray matter in your brain, just like physical exercises increases muscle. Okay, what does that mean? It means that whatever you do in life, whatever it is, professionally, personally, spiritually, meditation will help you do it better. And there's no cap to that. The more you do it, the better you get at whatever it is that you do. So that includes your career, your finances, your personal relationships with the people that you care most about, uh, meditation will make your appreciation of life greater. It will make sex better. It will make listening to music better. It will make watching movies better and reading. It will even lengthen your lifespan. And there's a whole ton of research coming up, out about this recently that meditation will actually lengthen your telomeres, which I'm not a scientist, but are genetic markers for how long you're going to live. So the more that meditation is studied, and it is studied a lot scientifically, this is one thing at magic.me where there are stacks and stacks and stacks of scientific studies, the more that it is studied scientifically, the more people realize how critical it is. And it, of course, in my opinion, will be, should be a cornerstone of 21st century medicine and beyond. It should have been all along, but as we go forward, meditation should be pushed for everyone as the key to a happy, fulfilling, successful, and fulfilling life. 
So if that is the case, and in fact, I don't even like the word meditation because it sounds really boring. I would like the phrase evolution because it truly is the, the technique that allows human evolution. If that's the case, why is meditation so boring? Why does it seem so boring? Why, when, I know when I talk about meditation, you probably think about like candles and incense and, you know, Deepak Chopra saying, whispering soothing things into your ear and it, overall kind of the feeling of like, yeah, that would be a nice thing to do if I had the time, but what is it really going to get me other than just kind of feeling kind of good and smug that I did it? Um, the reason that you feel that way is because our culture doesn't understand meditation and has been pushing all these kind of new age soft focus images of what it is for a long time that we're all kind of inculcated with through the media um, that are not anywhere near the actual thing it's been pushed as a lifestyle brand people basically market meditation like it's an antidepressant right I mean if you really think about it and you look at media about meditation it's kind of similar to like pharmaceutical commercials like what could be any less you know what what could be less exciting but at the same time meditation is the most intense it is the most hardcore yes it underlies every other spiritual discipline and technique but it is also the most potent direct intense and visceral when you really get into it meditation is going into the cavern of your own mind and confronting the dragon that is you or at least the part of you the illusory part of you that you think is you it is self-confrontation in the best possible way it is the technique that we have to go from being animal to something more you know in the classic schemes of things whether it's the buddhist scheme of things or even the medieval christian scheme of things which i think is quite underrated the great chain of being which I talked about in my in my John Dee book, um, the conception of, of the universe, the spiritual conception of the universe is that there is spiritual evolution in addition to physical evolution. So of course, with physical evolution, we get, you know, uh, mineral, vegetable, animal, reptile, mammalian, things like that, hominid, primate, etc. In the spiritual sense of things, there are levels as well. And specifically for human beings, we are considered to be, in the medieval Christian view, in between animal and angel. And in the Buddhist worldview, it's the same. Humans are considered to be between the animal and the devic realm of consciousness, or the demigod realm of consciousness. Right? Where humanity, as Nietzsche said at the beginning of the 20th century, is a ladder, or rather a bridge. Man or humanity is a bridge between um, the animal and the superhuman and that right there as I've said in some of my courses is the core idea of the 20th century and the 21st century that is the most important idea of the 20th century the idea that human beings are not a finished state we are in the process of becoming something greater well it turns out that there is a, a way to do this to become the higher state to become the higher human being and it's not transhumanism it's not genetic modification it's not you know supplements or putting neural link chips in your brain it's meditation and we've had it for thousands of years the process of becoming more than human is to practice meditation so that yes you can silence the linguistic part of your brain that thinks that it's you but also so that you can literally increase the gray matter in your brain to the part that you can do things cognitively that other people just can't do and I know that we like the idea of equality and everybody having an equal shot and everybody being equal and things like this but at the same time there's a huge difference between me and Arnold Schwarzenegger in his prime like you know there's no comparison in the same way you know, I, I'm just not equal to Arnold there. But in the same way that an advanced meditator is just not equal to somebody who has never even attempted to train their brain. Somebody who has never attempted to train their brain, which by the way is just about everyone, um, is, is food. They're prey for other people's will. They are easily distracted by their phone, by the media, by politics, by um, other people disrupting them, interrupting them, people having questions, 
uh, human beings are thrown about like like um, ships in a in a storm. And by the way, it's not a conspiratorial thing. It's just the, the planet is full of half of all beings who don't have the capacity to be able to focus and to be able to focus to the point to achieve what the Western magical tradition calls their true will simply because they haven't put in the work, they haven't done the exercise, and they haven't developed their brain to that point. So if I was to give a completely materialist, reductionist view of magic, meditation, and spirituality, which I always strive to do, it's simply that. It's exercise for your physical brain in the same way that physical exercise is for your body. So Mastering Meditation, the course at, at, at magic.me is and I say this um, with some hubris, but I think it's also true, the best course on meditation currently um, available, certainly on the internet. If you wanna to go to India uh, and find a guru, that will be better. But short of that, the best thing, you know, a real one, there's a lot of fake ones, but short of that, the best meditation course I think available to Western people right now is Mastering Meditation at magic.me. We knocked out all the stops on this one. Um, the reason it's so good is not because of something that I came up with, by the way, but because I've spent 20 years studying the actual tradition and going to India and studying with gurus and going up into the Himalayas, 13,000 feet to do things like meditate at the shrine, at the shrine where Ram meditated at the beginning of the Ramayana War. I've done it. I've been there. I, I, I spent most of my life pursuing this um, in many, many, many different styles, Buddhist, Hindu, uh, even uh, Muslim Sufi meditation styles, even Christian meditation styles, and of course all the stuff from Golden Dawn and Western esoteric tradition that we know and love. So I, I, although I do not present myself as a guru because I'm not one, I'm just a guy on the internet, I do know my stuff and I'm very confident in presenting this material to the public as I think a, as, as a truthful representation of the true tradition. And the true tradition, if you're asking, is Raja Yoga the Eightfold Path of Yoga. It's thousands of years old, but it's gone through some stages of development. Um, Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, which we're going to talk about in a second, is the one of the best um, codifications of it from the Middle Ages. Um, and it is a scientific method, and I don't mean scientific in the sense of, of you know, uh, Chris, um, Richard Dawkins scientific, but scientific in the sense of empirical. It is repeatable. There are steps and grade, there are graded steps to meditation that if anyone follows, no matter who they are, their background, race, gender, orientation, it does not matter age, by the way, it doesn't matter. They will achieve profound results that they did not think were possible in the space of a human life. Um, meditation will give you just let, let's just start at the surface level okay meditation will make you feel so high that it will when you really get into it that it will supersede anything you can get from even uh, hard street drugs and um, someone I met assured me this was the case you can produce pure bliss states out of your brain on command for free forever and if that doesn't sound enticing I don't know what is but that's just the beginning because it is from that field of bliss consciousness that intelligence itself begins to increase, improve, and evolve. And this is not new age spirituality, okay? This is not wishful thinking. This is not astrology. This is not, oh, I channeled a message that said we're ascending from the earth plane. Um, this is not, oh, you know, far off in the future something this is, is going to happen. No, this is physical exercise. Okay, it is deep breathing techniques, it is posture techniques, it is mental focus techniques that if you follow them and you get good at them will produce results and there's nothing supernatural about it, although the results may certainly seem that way. This is not wishful thinking, this is real. Every single part of this, every graded step of this is real, tangible, and I will teach you how to do it in this course. Anyone can do it, everyone should do it, and although I am of the mind that any meditation is good meditation, and I'm glad that there is so much interest in meditation in the world right now, and things like mindfulness and even apps like Headspace and things like that, although that's good, it's a good step, it's a little pinky toe in the, the shallow end of the pool, I also have to tell you it is not nearly anywhere near the real core tradition of meditation. It's not. And when and just so to qualify that, to be specific about that, when I say the real core tradition of meditation, there's a couple ones, there's several of them in the world, 
but the ones that I rate highest, at least at this point in my life, with this level of experience, and I'm, I'm always open to new information, but at this point, the two that I find to be the most pure, core, direct, effective, and real are Raja Yoga, which is what I teach in this course, and Vipassana, um, which is Theravada Buddhism. Um, first turning of the Dharma, and before we even, get, or first second turning actually of the Dharma, before we even get into Mahayana or Vajrayana or any, if you know Buddhism, or any of the kind of more magical shamanic techniques, just core Buddhist meditation, just the, 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 the initial teachings of the Buddha, that stuff is profound as well. And I do teach that stuff in a few other courses, um, specifically the Magic and Meditation of Buddhism course and the um, Alchemy of Chaos course. I, I kind of touch on the basics of that. But Raja Yoga, I have a tremendous... Um, a tremendously more amount of experience in and I am very very confident I'm there's many things in my life that I'm not confident of um, but there are one of the things I am truly confident of is my ability to teach this material without without hesitation without hesitation and I can say without ego um, and it is not that I'm great it's just that I put so much time into this I can say without ego that you're going to get a better education in this stuff um, in my course than just about anywhere else you can in the world right now. Um, and in addition to that, there's tons of information in the course about where you can go to find people who know more than I do. Um, but it is really good to get all the foundationals down, all the basics. You don't need a guru for that. You don't need to go to India. You just need somebody to clearly explain it to you. And I'm very good at that. So Mastering Meditation, the link is in the bio. It is... Um, an eight-week course but it starts out very very light it will not require more than five minutes a day at the beginning so you'll be able to ease into it so if you, your schedule is too too packed don't worry um, by the end of the course by eight, eight weeks you'll be meditating an hour a day the point of the course is not just to tell you about meditation it is to turn you into a meditator but we ease you into that because the world is complicated you will need time to restructure your life in such a way to support, for instance, morning meditation and things like that. And uh, life is, is, is hectic and stressful these days, as we all know. So, so the course is designed for modern people and anyone will be able to do it. Um, the only reason why you might not be able to do the course is if there is some physical disability that might prevent you from holding um, uh, yoga poses for long periods of time or deep breathing. However, the um, practices are adaptable and we are happy to work with you on adapting the practice based on your individual needs um, and if you want to talk to a physician as well but if you do think there may be some physical requirements you can email us the email is at the site and we're happy to work with you on modifying the practice i want everyone to be able to do this um, if you don't speak english if you are um, hearing impaired no problem all the courses, all the units, which are already all recorded, it's all done. Everything is transcribed and you can easily translate it with Google Translate in Google Chrome. So anyone should be able to take it thanks to modern technology. Okay, so tell you what, um, we're going to, I'm going to talk about Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. This is a fairly large book, so I'm not going to go through the whole thing, obviously, but I'm just going to touch on a little bit of the basics. Um, and um, just to, because I think it'll be interesting, and if this goes well, I actually want to do potentially a whole podcast about it. Um, and then um, we will, uh, I will potentially take a few questions at the end. So if you have questions, I'm not looking at the, the, the chat right now, but if you have questions, save them up and then you can type them in at the end when I ask for questions. So this is the Makunda Styles translation. And as you can see, it's kind of written in epigraphs like the Tao Te Ching or something like that. But don't be fooled, this is not a poetic book. Each one of these is a specific instruction. This is a grimoire. So uh, chapter one, Samadhi Pada, on being absorbed in spirit. So what I'm gonna be talking about here is the philosophy of yoga. And I should clarify really quick, what does yoga mean? Commonly, you will often hear people talking, saying that yoga means union. Uh, union with God. It's a lot. It's more direct than that. I think yoga means a technique. So think of it like magical system. Okay, it means a, a spiritual technique. I think that is the most effective way to think about it. Um, 
one other point of clarification, meditation versus yoga. So when we hear yoga, we automatically think Hatha yoga, right? We think flexi bendy yoga that you can do down at your local yoga studio next to the Starbucks. Um, that stuff is interesting, but it's calisthenics. It's only a yoga, and it, it in itself is not a full spiritual path. It is very supportive for meditation. It is very supportive for spirituality, but it's just um, physical exercise, okay? The thing that's really good about it is that it will help you hold meditation postures for long periods of time, but it in itself is kind of um, a sideshow. Right, and people love it because it helps them look good and they look hot and you know they get to meet people and all that. But the yoga that I'm talking about, Raja Yoga, is meditation, okay, or more specifically, the Eightfold Path of silencing your mind. And so what I'm going to begin with here is, is uh, with the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, is some of, uh, just a little bit of the philosophy of how um, the yogic school uh, sees the mind and the problem itself, right? Okay, so no, on, on being absorbed in spirit, Number one, with great respect and love, now the blessings of yoga instruction are offered. Okay, two, yoga is experienced in that mind which has ceased to identify itself with its vacillating waves of perception. Yoga is experienced in that mind which has ceased to identify itself with its vacillating waves of perception. Okay, so think about that for a bit. Um, Vacillating waves of perception obviously, mean, obviously means the input of your five senses, sight, sound, touch, taste, etc. Right? And think how overstimulated we are these days. I mean, obviously, phones, YouTube, um, email, every text, things are coming at us a billion times a second. So it's, this is particularly stressful and poignant these days. But even so, even if you were in the middle of the forest or the desert, you would still be seeing your sense perceptions and if you are like almost everyone on the planet, you are identifying yourself with them. You think it's you. You think the illusion is you. You think in modern terminology, the matrix is you. The matrix is not a computer simulation. It's your senses. Your brain is, is an organ that intakes sensory data and makes a picture out of it. Um, but the picture is not real. It's just something that your brain is creating from input that you can't actually interact with. Um, so right out of the gate, the Yoga Sutras identify the problem. The problem is you're identified with all this stuff that's not you. And if you go in further, even if you shut off all your eyes and close your ears and all of that, you've still got dreams and, and imagery and, and your mental dialogue and all that internal stuff, which also is not you. It's also Maya or Samsara. It's also illusion, right? It's just an internal level of illusion, right? So uh, you've got the, the internet out here of the world, which is illusion. You've got your own computer in here, which is also illusion. Those are both things that you, you, the true you, are interacting with, but are not actually you. Okay, so right out of the gate, the problem is defined. Three, when this happens, meaning the mind ceases to identify itself with its vacillating waves of perceptions. When you realize that it's not you, when this happens, then the seer is revealed, resting in its own essential nature, and one realizes the true self. When this happens, then the seer is revealed, resting in its own essential nature, and one realizes the true self. What is the tagline at magic.me? Unleash your true self. If you've seen so what is the true self it's not you but more awesome right it's not some angelic light photoshop being um it's uh it, it's the the core nature of your consciousness so a better way to think about this is if you know like in a movie theater obviously you have this whole movie that is projected by this by a, a by a movie projector right and you think the movie's real you get so wrapped up in it that you think it's it's actually happening. You identify with the characters. You, you know, you get all emotional, and, and you go on an emotional roller coaster, and all of this. But if at any time you turn around in the theater, you'll just see a little speck of light. You know, like a little uh, flashlight, light beam projecting the movie. That's what yoga is. Okay, if I was to really simplify it, that's what yoga is. It is turning around in the movie theater, and looking at that which projects consciousness. The projector of consciousness rather than the projection okay and i don't think i can make it much clearer than that the point of yoga is to turn around in the movie theater 
and I'm not putting any mythology on this or cosmology or anything about gods or goddesses or matrix or samsara or maya or gnosticism or demi or any of that stuff okay it's just turn around in the movie theater. turn around in the movie theater and look at that which consciousness is being projected from within yourself not that which consciousness is perceiving okay that is the path to resting in your own essential nature uh, it's not as easy as, as it sounds though, hence the practice of the Eightfold Path of Yoga. There's an actual method, a step-by-step, -step, rational, scientific, empirical method to do this that does not require believing anything, does not require any New Age uh, you know, antics, does not require anything except following specific postures, breathing methods, um, and, and, and withdrawal of consciousness internally into a single point. Okay, four. At all other times, the self appears to assume the form of thoughts of oscillations, and the true self is lost. Okay, at all other times, the self appears to assume the form of thoughts of oscillations, and the true self is lost. Pretty straightforward. I mean, it's like you're perceiving all of this. And, and this doesn't just mean waking existence, it also means dreams when you're asleep, everything. You know, your emotions, your feelings, your thinking about what's going to happen. Um, if you're into magic, it also includes magical experiences, visions, ESP, precognition, uh, tel tel telepathic dreams, um, synchronicity, all of that stuff is also part of the movie. It's also part of the movie. It's not the, the, your true self. It is, it is projected by consciousness. It's just more stuff. It's more stuff. The world of magic and, and spirituality and all that is also more illusion. Um, something that becomes very apparent when you begin to practice yoga and meditation, which is why yoga and meditation are the primary techniques of world spirituality, period. They allow you not to develop a new illusion for yourself, but to cut through the illusion and get to that which is, rather than get caught up in the story, the, the illusion, or somebody else's mythology, somebody else's religion, somebody else's story. It is acid. It cuts all the way through and shows you the truth, which is just your, the fact that your mind is projecting all of it, including supposedly spiritual things. Okay, five. The vacillations are of five types, which may be either painful or not painful. Six. The five vacillations, meaning the, the things that the mind does that are not actually your true self, the five vacillations are correct perception, misconception, imagination, sleep, and memory. Okay, so let's go backwards in order through that, okay? So what Patanjali is saying here is that there are, these are the vacillations or movement of mind uh, in a very simple way throughout your existence, throughout your, your, your day, right? So at some point in your day, your mind's going to be doing one of these five things, but none of them are actually your true self. So number one, memory. Right? Thinking back, imagining, remembering things that happened, uh, lamenting things that happened, regretting or longing for the past, things like this. Um, that, none of that is real. It's just your brain doing something. Right, um, The other people that were there don't remember it the same way. Uh, you don't remember it correctly because your brain has changed over time. You just Your mind is just doing something that seems real, but as somebody said the past is a foreign country you can't get there right it's like it's it's you don't you're not able to perceive it correctly and you never perceived it correctly in the first place so as your mind generates memory it's just this kind of thought bubble that it's making it's not real next sleep okay so when you're sleeping everything is is shut off right um, unless you're dreaming that also either if you're in sleep consciousness or dreaming those also are illusion Dreaming is the most obvious one because in our culture, at least, we feel that dreams are not real. That has not been the case in lots of other cultures and periods of history, but in our culture currently, like the Romans felt that dreams were very real, many, many, many cultures throughout the world, shamanic cultures, uh, many East Asian cultures believe that dreams are very real. But, um, you know, we, I don't know who's watching this, but, you know, um, Western Americans, most of my audience is Americans, British, Canadians, Australians, um, Europeans, we, we don't actually believe that dreams are real, so that's not a biggie. Uh, but what you have to realize is nothing else is either, right? Um, imagination, 
is the next one, not real. So if you're particularly imagining the future, what might happen, anxiety is the big one, um, false evidence appearing real, you know, anxiety of things that you're imagining that might happen, which if you really think, you know, of all the bad things that you've imagined in your life that are going to happen, how many of them actually have? Not many, I would guess. And of the ones, if the bad things that had happened in your life, my guess was a lot of them, you never saw them coming. You never imagined they would happen. So imagination is also an illusion and a very destructive one. It can be, although it can be very creative as well. That, that too is illusion. Uh, next one is misconception. So a misperception of reality. Again, false evidence appearing real. Somebody says something to you and you take it one way, but they, they didn't mean it that way. Your brain is misperceiving you know, you're, you're taking in evidence from the world and constructing a story about it, which is probably not true. Also an illusion, but even finally, correct perception is not true. If you correctly perceive something in the world, and the best example is probably mathematics, right? Of our best, our best um, option for perceiving things correctly, you pr correctly per uh, solve a math problem, that too is just your mind doing things. Even if, it is, even if your brain is working correctly and you are correctly perceiving a situation, that too is a, a movement, a vacillation of mind. It's probably the most useful one, but it is also not you. It's just if your mind is a tool, you are using the tool correctly, but it's not you. Okay, so seven, and I don't think we'll go too much further than this. I think probably just the first seven is a good taste. Seven, the sources of correct understanding are direct perception, inference, and revelation derived from reflections on the scriptures or from the testimony of one who knows. Okay, I would actually take issue with a lot of this, but let's go backwards, okay? So correct understanding from the last one, um, uh, revelations derived from reflections on the scriptures or from the testimony of one who knows. So this is a matter of faith. It is a, a matter of the Hindu religion, religions from which the Yoga Sutras arise. And that is the idea that since you, you do not currently know, but if you listen to somebody who does, particularly somebody who has successfully followed the path of, the, of meditation um, or scriptures, or, you know, written documents from those who have, then, then you can get good information. Now, this is true to a certain extent, okay? If you've never meditated and you listen to somebody who has, um, you know, is much, much further along the path um, than like me or my dog who just came through, who is, of course, the Buddha incarnate, um, then you can be given guideposts towards correct perception. But ultimately, of course, does anyone truly know? I don't actually think so. I don't actually think there is something like called enlightenment, by the way. Uh, but you can certainly be more um, developed, you can be better at meditation, you can be more enlightened by meditating, but I don't think there is a final enlightenment. We talk about that in the course. Um, inference, which means, um, um, you know, inferential reasoning, uh, you can also uh, understand correctly from, and direct perception. Um, this is, of course, written in the Middle Ages, so I think that modern uh, by the modern day, I think modern philosophy has probably overturned all of these as correct sources of understanding. Um, so I will leave it there. Um, where are we? Do we like what? What? Uh, you know, is is everything an illusion? Yes, of course it is. But the practice of yoga, no matter, you know, then now has worked for thousands of years. It will work thousands of years from now. It will work when people are on Mars. The practice of yoga will allow you to turn around in the theater to see the source of consciousness and to identify yourself with the truth of who you really are, rather than to be thinking constantly that the movie is real. And that transcends any philosophical questions about enlightenment or schools or Buddhism versus Hinduism or what is true questions that are, you know, in, in to be solved by philosophers. Yoga is a tangible practice. If you do it, you will find out for yourself. If you do it, you will find out for yourself. Right? And it, that is why it is such a profound piece of technology and always has been in world history. Um, it is a set of methods for finding out yourself that anybody can do and you don't need to have any type of philosophical or educational background to do any more than you need to, to do physical exercise. It is profound, it is a gift to the world and I find, I feel that it is my, um, one of my primary jobs in this lifetime to be able to give people good information about it. 
um, to without the the horseshit. Okay, to be very direct, without the horseshit, without the beads, the robes, the Russell brandiness of everything. You don't need it, right? You don't even need any religious framework around it. You just need to do it just like you just need to do push-ups. You just need to do it. And then you will find out. And when you find out, you don't need all of the spiritual books. You don't need all of that the New Age store crap. You don't need religion anymore. You don't need second-hand. Those are all second-hand accounts of an experience that you can get for yourself, right? And not to be crude, but the whole field of spirituality is like people who have never had sex telling people who have never had sex about what sex is. It really is. And there are people who, who are not virgins anymore and they have had the experience and they can show you not, they, can, not, not, they, they won't tell you what to believe. Or, or, or what to think or what's true they'll show you how to actually do it yourself <laughs> appropriately you know consentingly with you know and 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 um, that that's what meditation is right is you get the experience for yourself and then you know and then you don't have to waste your life you don't have to waste your life wondering what's real or chasing all of these nonsensical um, religious or spiritual or new age structures you just know, and in addition to knowing or understanding or having the gnosis, right? Having the gnosis, in addition to that, you become a more evolved person. Everything works better because quote unquote spirituality is not about going off somewhere in the distance and becoming something that's not here. It's about becoming fully who you are. It's about becoming fully your full potential in this existence, which as far as we know is the only one that is. It's about becoming fully human. As I've said before, I don't even like the word spirituality because what am I trying to do? Become Casper the fucking ghost? No, I'm trying to become a full human. Um, as Austin Spare said it, I'm trying to live like a tree walking. I'm trying to use the, the utmost of my, my capacity as a human being. And, and like, like everyone, I mean, like we're all flawed. I mean, there's so many places where I'm not doing that, but meditation, I am, have great faith and a knowledge that meditation, where, wherever I'm at, meditation is helping me do whatever it is that I'm doing better. And, and not perfectly, because nobody's perfect, but way effing better than I would be doing otherwise. Way better. And it disentangles me from the bullshit of the world and the bullshit of people around me. And it allows me to live a life in which I am focused upon what is true and the true will, the true self. My goal, it allows me to focus my life on achieving what I want to achieve in life effectively, not getting caught up in other people's illusions. And that in itself is worth an infinite amount. There's nothing more worthwhile for you to be doing than meditation. So my, my ask of you, whether you take my course or not, um, it is the best course you possibly can get. But whether you take my course or not, take what I'm saying now and, and read the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. Begin to take the idea of meditation seriously. There are some free resources on how to begin meditating on this YouTube channel. And then when you're ready, the full course is there for you, which will give you everything. And, and make it easy and straightforward and step by step so you don't need to second guess yourself or waste time doing trial and error. It will just turn on all the floodlights and make the path clear for you, right? For whatever it is that you want to do in your life, will be, will be inf you will infinitely be better able to do it, infinitely. And again, this isn't something I came up, uh, it came up with specifically, it's something I'm presenting that's very real and stable and has worked and will work and there's nothing better that you can do for yourself other than physical exercise and diet than exercising the physical material of your brain so whether you take the course or not i highly recommend it take it seriously begin to meditate even if it's just with the free resources on this channel and um that is is there's nothing nothing better you can do for yourself okay i think i probably hopefully that's pretty clear um, if people liked the, um, if people liked that in terms of the, um, potentially maybe I can do a fuller podcast on it. Um, but, um, yeah, uh, let's see. It's, uh, I'll, it will take like maybe five max, 10 minutes. 
Uh, we'll see how it goes. If anyone has any questions about the course or about meditation, uh, no other topics, nothing magic or anything else. But if you have a question, question about meditation in general or the course in specific, I'm happy to answer it now um, if you um, if you want to pop that into the chat. Um, no, I am not CIA. Um, I'm just going to look back a little bit while people type in questions. Azamat says, Indians uh, call Raja Yoga more often it's Ashtanga Yoga. Yes, that's true. Uh, mantra, yes, but mantra is a subsidiary technique. Like Hatha Yoga, it is a side technique and not the main show, but it is good on its own. Um, Samuel says, yes, from what I understand, Hatha Yoga primes the body for yoga, Raja Yoga so the body isn't getting in the way. 100% correct. Very good. Uh, Azamat says, does yoga help meditation? I've heard that the main point of yoga, so specifically Hatha Yoga, stretchy yoga, is to better prepare body for meditation. Correct, yes. Um, D times three says, can I ask what diet would assist with that, with this? Okay, great question. In general, this is a question for you to determine on your own because everyone's body is different. I have found in practice, however, that a vegetarian diet is pretty good. Veganism is a little tough because um, you, you you tend to run low on energy. Veganism is a tough one, uh, and I've been vegan multiple times in my life, and it, it's tricky for me. But people are different. Um, you tend to get a little, a little too loopy with veganism too. But I think just a vegetarian diet um, is probably ideal. Um, but I wouldn't stress out about it too much. You don't need to adopt any specific diet to meditate, um, and you really also don't notice the difference until you're more advanced, anyways. So these are are questions of subtlety for more advanced. Um, practitioners um, so don't worry about it and, and jump in but at least in my experience um, um, vegetarian diet helps one thing that definitely helps caffeine very helpful very helpful strong green tea I recommend it uh, we discuss this stuff a lot we also discuss in the course um, supplementation you can use to assist pranayama we even get into by the way um, wearable technology and digital analytics we, we we now as of 2022 have the ability to have direct digital analytics of what our brains are doing so that we know so that we know exactly what progress we're making it's pretty phenomenal it's never been possible before in history and so we're fully we've fully integrated all that into the course as well uh, the course leverages all the most modern as you can see i've got this whole rack of gear behind me um, the course leverages all the most modern technology that we can we have access to to be able to assist the practice uh, that was not possible in Patanjali's time. And to my knowledge, I could be wrong, but to my knowledge, no other meditation teacher in the world um, that is teaching real techniques is, you know, other than maybe doing, you know, like Headspace app or something like that. Um, no other actual meditation teacher in the world is leveraging wearables or digital technology. I don't think anyone is. Um, one of the reasons is they just may not know about it, but the other reason is people don't like being measured. There's a really famous phrase in business. It's like, you know, anyone who doesn't want to be measured does not want to improve. And, and, and fuck that, in my opinion, you know, part of my language is just like, it's like, if you don't want to be measured, then, you know, meditation is not, not to comfort, is not a comfort, not meant to be a comforting illusion. Uh, it, it, there is a right and wrong way to do it, do it. And people don't like that idea, particularly with spirituality. They don't like the idea that their illusions might not be real. But once you get actual digital analytics in it, you can tell whether your brain is, is, is decreasing in its activity or not. And um, I'm all for that. Like, why mess around? This is serious stuff. Okay. Uh, Andrew, good for, thank you for the um, vote on full podcast. Luke says, I bought the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali when I was taking a community college yoga course and read one page and gave up trying to understand. Uh, I had the same experience when I first read it, and that's why I think it's actually helpful to have somebody kind of go over it and explain it from their own perspective. Because uh, it's, it's meant to be a teaching text. It's not meant to be something you just pick up and understand. It's meant to be a text that a teacher picks up and uses, like I just did, as a framework to explain what it means. Right, and a lot of occult books are like that, which is why they're often so confusing and people get the wrong idea about them. Um, um, but uh, that, but you know, now it makes perfect sense to me, uh, and it will make perfect sense to you if you spend long periods of time meditating, and in the meantime, a teacher can help by explaining what the, what it means. Um, so persist, persist. Uh, Jamie says, "Are you ever focused about worried about focusing too much at the point on your brow?" No, no. Um, 
GT, MCT, oil, and carry gold. Ah, you've taken um, other courses from me before, I see. Yes. Okay. Vanessa, hello, says, looking forward to the new course and improving practice. Awesome. Uh, I'm interested in adapted body postures now that I have a knee disability. Should I avoid meditating laying down? Okay, great question. Yes, one posture you really shouldn't do is, is lay down because you'll just go to sleep. But if you can sit in a chair, that works. Or, uh, um, you know, I my meditation is tough on my knees as well, so I don't know the nature of the disability. But um, yeah, a sitting in a, in a chair is fine, or sitting on the ground probably with outstretched legs is probably also fine. But you're, you're welcome to email us as well. Josh says, do you focus on pranayama when learning asana or just focus on mastering the posture first before moving on? Okay, so, so in our course, we go through step by step. So we do asana first. Um, so in general, you want to master asana first before moving to pranayama. But then when you get that, you, you do do them both at the same time. But you want to do it step by step. Uh, and we cover that in the course. Somebody's talking about a subreddit. Is there, there's not like a Magic Me subreddit, is there? Uh, if there is, I've never heard of it. Or a subreddit about my stuff. Uh, question, I have a question about meditating under great anxiety, like in a threatening situation whose most probable outcomes your ego is terrified of. My mind won't let me concentrate there. Well, if you're physically in danger, you probably shouldn't be meditating. <laughs> you should probably be figuring out how to get out of that situation. Um, and and that's why the first two rungs of yoga actually are all about how to restructure your life so that you're not in situations like that. So yeah, um, but if you're if you're experiencing anxiety because of th something you think that might happen that is not actually happening that is not actually real, then meditation is a tool for cutting through that and getting through that and realizing that it's not real and and uh, divesting yourself of that. Jalen says so. It's about doing illusions better than other illusions. No. But good question, very perceptive question that shows you're paying attention. Um, the idea is to not have any illusion. And But spirituality in general and magic and new age stuff very much can be like swapping illusions for other illusions, like you've said. Which is why they are so uh, um, illusory, right? And, and why they are so uh, lead people down paths of delusion. Um, it's about not having illusions. and But the only way to not have illusions is to quiet your mind. It's not to think something that is not an illusion because it's not possible. It's like, it would be like having the movie projector project a new movie that you think is not, is real. They're all movies. The point is to shut off the projector. Azamat says, meditating since 2019, but excellent question. Azamat says, I've been meditating, meditating since 2019. Back then I've learned about TM and it was good first year, but then my progress just stopped. Okay, also a great point. TM is mantra meditation. It is a very, very light technique. It is very shallow end. Um, and, and I'm just going to be straight up about that. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, um, uh, it's, it's like a, a technique that kids would do in India, right? So it's, it, it, you should move on from it to more. We teach more, more technique, advanced te techniques in this course. Um, oh, so somebody asked, what do I think about TM? That's pretty much what I think. It's just mantra meditation. And by the way, they charge you like $1,200 for a mantra that is like one of the most common mantras in India that like school kids know. Okay. Um, so, uh, I just saved you $1,200 right there. Don't do it. They also tell you, you can fly and things like this. And it's like, if somebody wants to show, send me a YouTube of them flying, I will be first to to say like, that's awesome and I wanna know how to do that, but come the F on, okay? Like meditation is hard enough, you don't need to go, and, and beneficial enough and, and profound enough and, and spiritual enough that you don't need to go hog wild making shit up. Uh, that's my opinion on it. A TM is goofy, yes, I agree, Luke. Um, how would you compare results of object concept meditation versus emptying the mind? Um, it's a, a, a continuum. So you begin with object con concentration. There are different practices done at different times. That's also made clear in the course. Uh, Ian says, I'm at 25 minutes of meditation. Great, awesome. And now my body starts screaming to move. Yes, that's how you know you're, you're really doing it. Great job. How do I quiet it? 
You just keep going. You just keep going. Uh, and final question I'll answer on uh, un Uncrowned Oak says, uh, cool name says, does this specific yoga, specific yoga have chanting and mantra involved? No, no. In, in my opinion, chanting and mantra, which, so those are actually two specific yoga, yoga techniques, which I, I mentioned, I go over in the course. Bhakti yoga is ch chanting. Mantra yoga is its own thing. These are subsidiary practices. Raja yoga, so let me, I'll be real clear about this actually. There's six main types of yoga, okay? Raja Yoga, the Eightfold Path of Yoga, King Yoga, the best yoga, the very best, um, which is what we're talking about here, the Eightfold Path of Yoga. Um, Bhakti Yoga, which is chanting, dancing, all of that stuff. Um, Jnana Yoga, which is yoga by knowledge or philosophical understanding. Kabbalah is similar. Um, and the fourth one is uh, Karma Yoga, which is yoga work, uh, good deeds and work in the world, selfless service. To these are added two subsidiary texts. So those are the main four ones as covered by um, Vivekananda. There are two subsidiary techniques. Mantra yoga, which is chanting a mantra in your head, or out loud, but ideally in your head. And, hobby, and um, excuse me, tantra yoga, which is magic, which is not covered in the course, and I'm probably never going to cover because it's just, it's just not a good idea. Um, it actually has nothing to do with sex. Um, it's much... Um, it's, it's something totally different. Um, if you if you want to know about that, watch uh, Wild Wild Country on, uh, on Netflix about Osho, about how crazy that gets. Uh, I'm very well mannered. We don't do that at Magic.me. Um, so Tantra Yoga and and um, Mantra Yoga. These are subsidiary techniques, and um, the main four are as covered. But the the one that covers all of them, the key to the King Yoga, Raja Yoga, is the one you want. The rest is the rest are for people who can't handle Raja Yoga. Okay, so Raja Yoga is the one that you want. By can't handle, I mean don't have the discipline and focus. You want the discipline and focus. That's the one that you're going to get all the good stuff from. That's the one that's going to alter your brain. That's the one that's going to evolve you, Raja Yoga. The others are stepping stones, in my opinion, for people who want to get to Raja Yoga. But why, why screw around? Life is short. Why not go straight to the good stuff? You don't need, by the way, you don't need any prior experience. You don't need prior experience of meditation or magic or anything. In fact, if you don't, it's probably good because you can jump in without any preconceptions, right? Okay, so hopefully that answers everyone's questions. And so check out the course. It is, um, you can learn all about it. The link is in this video. It is Mastering Meditation at magic.me. The link is there. Um, jump in. Everything is ready for you. You have the chance to be one of the very first students and, and get, it, get to it. ASAP and get the get the edge in life the ultimate edge. So um, It's all there people are already signing up people are loving it um, It is again the greatest course I've ever done and by the way There's a ton of I basically wrote this is also basically a new book from me I practically wrote a new book in terms of supplementary material in the course Anyone can do it if you have eight weeks. No problem. There are payment plans. It is possible just do it. If you're here, if you've watched all the way to the end, you are ready. You're ready. If you didn't bounce after 30 seconds and you're still engaged and you're still listening and you're thinking about it, you're ready. Just do it. There is nothing better you could possibly do for yourself. Just do it. Just do it. All right. I will see you in class. Thank you for hanging out with me on a Saturday and we're going to have a great time at